going. Okay, well, uh, you know, I always wonder when people are going to go teach a class, like what's their, uh, you know, what's the, what's the motivation? So this is full disclosure, God honest truth. I woke up today, had a lot of time in my afternoon schedule, and I thought, you know what? I've got Zoom. Evernote's been in the news a little bit lately. I've got this list of people that have either, um, you know, bought an Evernote product from me or people that have just um, emailed, signed up for an email list for an Evernote webinar I did uh, probably last year at this point. And I just started kind of pinging out to my social media and just saying, hey, I've, I've, I've got time. Let's talk Evernote. And that's my motivation. Like I love Evernote and it honestly frustrates me because Evernote just um, increased their pricing. And a lot of people said, hey, I'm leaving Evernote. And to me, that's like, you know, selling your car because the price of gas went up 10 cents, right? Like it's, it's uh, the price of tires went up $20. Like if you're, if you're frustrated about the price of Evernote, it's because you're not using Evernote correctly. So I'm a little bit snobbish about Evernote in that way. So the free version, they've started to cut back on a lot of features. They limit it to two devices. But um, I want to simply answer any question you have about Evernote. If you don't have any, then I can certainly just kind of open up my Evernote and start sharing about what I use, to, what I use it for, how I, how I utilize the tool. I guarantee you'll learn something new about Evernote today, even if you are uh, an Evernote expert in there every day. So let me start with, and I'm okay with an awkward pause. I'll, I'll have a little bit of my veggies here while I wait. Uh, if you would just type in the chat any question you have about Evernote at all. It could be super, super basic. It could be crazy complex. doesn't matter. So just go to that chat at the bottom. Click on the chat. Uh, it'll pop up a window probably on the side of your screen there. And just type in a question you have about Evernote if you don't have any and I'm okay with that. I'm prepared to go jump in and open my, I have my Evernote open and I'm ready to, just to teach out of that. So I'm gonna get a drink of water, eat a little cucumber, and then we'll start answering the questions. All right. And everyone will get a recording um, of this. Uh, I'm gonna send it to, if you've got an email from me, you'll get a, uh, you'll get a, uh, uh, copy of the recording. If you didn't get an email from me and you hear because of a social media post, you just have to go to takepermission.com and I'll show you where you can click to be on that list. All right, wonderful. We're getting some questions. A little peach and we can get going. Great question, Candace. Great question, Ryan. Great question, Fruitful One. That sounds like a Star Wars name, like Fruitful One or something. I don't know. That's great, though. Um, from it, comment. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Okay. Well, we'll just start in order. So first come, first serve. Make sure I'm recording here. Great. So the first question we had is um, how you use it. What about audio clips and notebooks? Eric, can you unmute yourself? Because I know your mic works because you spoke earlier. Bottom left corner. There we go. Yes. Hey, you need to elaborate for me. How do I use it? Like, wait a minute, what do I use it? What, what, what things do I put in it? What, what kind of, what do you mean by that? Well, I know it has all these bells and whistles and things like that. Right. I was wondering how you personally use it. Sure. And how you organize it. Because I. Great question. Use all right, one so, notebook and everything kind of gets thrown yeah. in one place and then I'm like, you know, all right. So organize and do that. All right. That's a great question. Great place to start. And if you have to, if everybody has to go in three minutes, then you'll get your money's worth the next three minutes. All right. Because here's the fundamental thing. I am a firm, firm believer in this. Unless you have to share Evernote with someone else, I think using one notebook, maybe two, right. And all tags after that is really the way to go. And by that, I, I mean this. Um, if you look over here, don't, don't get sick here. If you see over here, I have, I have post-it notes, right? I'm trying to do this. So you post-it notes, right? So post-it notes are a way to label something, obviously. And if I had a lot of different colors of post-its, think of those as tags or labels, right? So this is how I use Evernote. I put a piece of information in Evernote. 
For instance, I put in a coupon I got from my favorite pizza place called Mellow Mushroom, and I use an Evernote feature, which is a paid feature. I got it in my inbox today. I forwarded it via email. It went right into my Evernote, and I tagged it, or I labeled it, coupon, and I might have just labeled it coupon, but I gave it a little tag. So first thing is everything I put in Evernote has a tag. Everything. I never put just put something in Evernote. I always tag it. And a tag is essentially a label. And the reason that tags are better than notebooks is because you can't have one note in multiple notebooks. Think of it like a file folder. If I said to Randall, hey, Randall, go get me the file on Eric. Go get me Eric Gale's criminal record, please, out of our files, right? And I hope that's funny, Eric. But uh, so Randall's going to go over to get the record. He's going to go into a, into a drawer and pick out an individual file, right? Well, with tags, if I said, go get uh, Eric's criminal report, you could say, well, do you want to search by uh, what tag? Like, is it by males? Is it by uh, petty theft? Is it, the point is you can have one piece of information and a lot of different tags to label it. And when you do that, it simplifies your search process. So when I want to go look for a piece of information, I might type in the word pizza because that was a pizza coupon, or I might just type the word coupon. And when I do that, I'm going to get all of my coupons showing up at the same time. So primarily I use, I'm going to use my screen saver here. There we go. Uh, primarily I use Evernote to capture everything I never want to forget, right? Everything I want to remember, I put in Evernote and I always tag it. And I use essentially one notebook. Now that notebook is huge, it has thousands of notes in it, but because Evernote is constantly archiving everything and saving it, um, I, I only have to tag it a little bit. So I will say primary lesson number one, if you remember nothing else, is learn to use tags to think of them as simply labels. They're just little labels you put on each piece of information and you get to decide what those tags are, okay? And beyond that, um, Remember that Evernote is smarter than you are, and that's not an insult to you. It's a compliment to Evernote. And so the best way to use Evernote, number one, use as many tags as you can. Number two, put as much information as you possibly can into Evernote because it will never forget. And if it doesn't forget, then the more information you can put in, the better. And you might think, Andy, I've got this huge collection of information in Evernote, and I can't find stuff. Then start to organize it. And I can show you how to do that in a moment. But for instance, if you had a bunch of stuff related to a project and the word diamond was in it, you could search for the word diamond and it would pull up every single note that has the word diamond in it. And then you could tag all of those notes at the exact same time. You have to go individually and tag, 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 tag. So the important thing for this time together for us today is for you to be selfish, right? And which means you need to ask a question that's going to help you specifically. And again, I have nothing to sell at the end of this. Um, I'll tell you how to make sure you get on the email list so you get the replay of this. But there's no pitch at the end. I have an Evernote product, but I'm adding some stuff to it. It's not ready to go. Uh, I'm just here to help you with some questions you might have. Eric, I'll answer a couple more things about your question and we'll move on to another one. I put a lot of links to other notes inside of Evernote. I'll show you how to do that today so you can navigate in between notes. Uh, I put all of my show notes for podcasts. I put workflows, so checklists in there. I will put images. I will put uh, links in there. I will do presentations using Evernote. Evernote has a really slick presentation tool. Um, I will record audio of me reading to my kids. And so when, they're, when I'm gone traveling, my wife can just hit play uh, and they can listen to me read them a story. There's a lot of, because you can put so many different kinds of pieces of information inside of Evernote. Um, a lot of times I'll put information in Evernote and then I'll share it with other people uh, because you can share Evernote notes. It's very simple in that way. So um, audio clips, to answer your question specifically, Eric, before we move on uh, to Mark and Fruitful One, is that, yeah, you can drop audio clips in there. You can put pretty sizable files inside of Evernote. I don't think it's, I mean, it's fine just to put them in there, uh, but I usually use Dropbox to organize my files. I use Evernote as sort of my running notebook I do certainly put files in there and, and images and such. So hopefully that helps, uh, Eric. Now, Mark S., this is the thing. I am not a huge uh, Evernote fanboy that I'm not going to talk about its failures. Formatting columns and tables. I wish that Evernote had tables, right? You, could, you can make tables like Evernote 
or like um, Excel document how you can make tables, but formatting them is problematic. They're not great. I wish I could do formulas and do math and sort of have like an Excel sheet inside of uh, a note. Um, it doesn't do formulas right now. I hope they get that. But um, Mark, if you want to unmute yourself and ask more specifically, but I will just say it's not great. You can format columns inside of tables, but you know, creating tables is a little problematic and I don't generally rely on tables a lot inside of Evernote just because I find them to be a little bit clunky. So Mark, I don't know if you have any other questions about that. Um, so uh, if you don't, then we can move on. Uh, let's see here. All right. So Mark, if you had a question, you can unmute and chat, but otherwise I'm gonna move on here. Fruitful one, basically how to organize Evernote and how to find what you've added, how to make it easy to find stuff. I'm gonna sound a little yay, yay, rah, rah, but you need to trust yourself more. Like you need to trust that if, if you took notes today and you remembered one word about our, from, from your notes, then you could find it in Evernote. If you took notes on what we're talking about today and you just remember one word or two words or how to spell my last name and you happen to put that in the note, it's going to find that note. So my point is put as much information as you possibly can inside of Evernote tag it with as many tags as you can put. So for my podcast, I put podcast is a tag, take permission is a, pe is a tag. So I know that all of my take permission and podcasts are notes are tagged with those two tags. And I might end up having tons and tons of information. Maybe I wanna add the word research to that because it's not an actual podcast episode, it's research for a podcast episode, but you have to trust yourself that you're going to find stuff. Why? Because we usually remember something like I can go, yeah, I know there was a guy named Rob. It's another guy named Randall there. And I know I wrote that down. So just type in those words and it will find it for you. The, the, the best way again to use Evernote is to put as much information as you possibly can and then start to organize it because you don't know how you're going to use it until you get in there. Right, it's like trying out for a team. You don't know what position you're at, you're good at until you get out there and you start playing. So don't try to figure out Evernote completely before you start. I encourage you to jump in and start just throwing as much information as you can and then start to organize it, start adding tags. I mean, you can have like 10,000 tags, so you're not gonna run out of tags, okay? Uh, let's see here, fruitful one, good question. Randall, how to use the Evernote, Evernote beyond that of serving as a digital file cabinet? Well, I mean, it's an interesting question, Randall. If you want to unmute, um, I see here. If you want to unmute, maybe elaborate on that. I, I think using it as a digital file cabinet is really good, but it's a good question, Randall, because it's not a place just to store stuff and forget about it, right? It's a place that I go to every day for workflows and such. So I see you've unmuted, Randall. you want to elaborate on your question a little bit? It's a great question. Yeah, I, I primarily use Evernote. I, I uh, download a lot of things from the internet, articles and, and so yep. forth. Yeah. In Evernote, and also I have a I have a scanner on my desk. Yeah. I take a lot of documents and scan them into Evernote. Yeah. So I'm accumulating all this information, all this data. Yeah. But my question is basically: is is there some way to use Evernote beyond just accumulating stuff like that? Well, I I would say absolutely, but you have to decide, uh, you know, what you want to use it for. So, for instance. Uh, and I can only speak to my own use here, but when I do a podcast, I use it for research. But one of the things I do is that I've got a checklist for every single one of my podcasts. And let me just do a screen share real quick because it's more exciting than looking at me. Um, screen share here. So you should be able to see my Evernote right now. And let me just go to, this is the latest podcast episode that I put out. Let me make my font a little bit bigger here. So it's a little easier to read, whoops. There we go. So uh, can you see this, Randall? Yes. Okay, so for instance, the, one of the things I use it for is this is my workflow for my podcast. Every podcast episode, I have to do all of these individual things and this is the order that I do them in. So the first is just a workflow and for every podcast, I've got a podcast template right here all right, actually I have to add some, actually I have to add some of these because I, I have some new ones. Um, but, so I'm gonna go back here. So one of the first things I do is I use it for checklists, for a workflow, right? Now each one of these things 
Um, let's see here. So Instagram images. So I said, I need to make three Instagram images. Well, I make those using a tool called Canva, canva canva.com, but I also put them right here. So there's the actual image, right? And part of this is I just don't want to have to go find stuff. I want it to be in one place. So I've got my workflow, but this note started off as just this right here. That's all it was. And then as I did each one of these things, I would add content. So here's a table that someone was asking about, right? And a lot of this stuff is standard. It's, it's just repeated every week. But individually for this one, I have to, my last podcast was about masterminds. So I had to write this. But this is a, a workflow that I use it for. And then links that I add. Um, this is another image. Uh, this is another image. This is an opt-in box. Um, this is a link that will be embedded into this. So I use it for links. I'm using it for images. I'm using it for HTML code, right? Because where else would you store HTML code? I'm not saying all of you do this, but I'm saying, what a, what's another good place for this? You know, I, I don't know, a Google Doc, maybe, but it's never as easy to, to I think, navigate through uh, Google Docs as it is through, um, through Evernote. And as you can see here, I've got more images there at the bottom. So, I mean, I, I think that it's, it is a digital file cabinet, but it's also for me uh, a, really, a great tool for my workflow. What other questions do you have there, Renal? Oh, you, that was very helpful. Oh, sweet. I'm glad. Uh, and now here's the other thing. I don't think you, listen, I'm talking to you, not just Randall, I'm talking to everyone here. I don't think you can use Evernote wrong. Like there's some people who go, oh, I'm not using it right. Wrong, that's not true. Like the only way, I'm sorry, the only way you can not use Evernote right is to not use it. Like you just, the more you put stuff into it, the better you're gonna be as long as you stay up on it, right? So, uh, you know, the, the, it's like, I'm not using this car right. Well, you're right, because you gotta get in the car and hit the gas, and turn the key and, you know, use the wheel, right? So, um, y you're going to really use Evernote in a powerful way. I really believe that, whoever you are listening today. But you have to decide to start leaning into it and putting more information. And I believe that uh, it, it has to make sense to you. Like that's why when I teach people how to use Evernote, I didn't say you've got to do this, this, and this, other than you have to use tags. But which tags? Should you do tags by projects or people's names or Monday or Tuesday? Or I don't care because I don't know how your brain works. Other than I know your brain work doesn't work like mine. And so I just want to teach you how to use the tool and then you can apply it to your own situation. Randall, does that help? Yes, very much so. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Glad to help there. Candice, uh, I've seen where Michael Hyatt uses tags a lot. Yes, he does. My current Evernote is a mess. What is the best way to reconfigure, reorganize? Great question. Uh, Mike Hyatt, friend of mine, lives about 15 miles that way. Awesome guy. Uh, and he is one of the most organized people I know. So please, another tip for the day, don't, consider, don't compare yourself to Michael Hyatt unless you want to feel like a loser because he's a stud and he's super organized uh, and most people aren't. Uh, and um, I, I would say this, if you, I, I'm gonna give you a tip to get organized. And Candace, you asked me this question. If you wanna unmute, that would be great. If not, that's okay too. But if you wanna unmute and, and we can chat. But let's just say you've already got content. Interrupt me anytime here, Candace if you unmute, otherwise you can put in the chat. Um, but it, let's just say you've got a bunch of notes already in there for a project. You wanna search for a word that relates to that project, right? And so let's just do this. I'm gonna share my screen. And um, Candace, did you unmute? I can't, I'm hearing something. You did? Can you hear me? I can, wonderful to have you. I always just feel weird talking to someone like it's not fair. It's like the one-sided mirror thing. You know, I'm talking, but you're not talking to me. So I'm glad you unmuted, Candace. Where are you calling in from? Duluth, Georgia. We're right Duluth. outside of Atlanta. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here. So, um, oh, I see your video there. Wonderful. All right, thanks. All right, so are you seeing my Evernote now, Candace? Okay, so let's just do this one as an example. Um, pick... Pick a word. This is this could go this could go south fast, but just pick a word that you might think relates to me and my business. Keep it clean. Uh, hold on, I'll think about it just a second. I would say pug, but you just got him. Pug? So. Maybe I do. Maybe I have pug. Uh, let's see here. No, no, I don't have. We just got a pug. So There's let's. 
let's do a family. That'll work. The word family. Okay. Now this is a great example. So I just typed the word family. Now you can see I have a tag called family. So I could look for notes tagged with the word family. Let's do that first. And right here, I've got all these notes that I've already tagged as family. Okay. But let's just say they're not tagged family. Let's say they just have the word family in them. And this is to help you get organized if you haven't already organized them. So this is what I got, 488 notes. Everybody see this? 488 notes found with the word family. I'm gonna click right here and I'm gonna hit Command A for your PC, it's, it's Control A. And I'm going to select, hold on, I did it wrong. I just selected 488 notes. I didn't hit Shift, click, 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 times 488. I hit Command or Control A. Now what I can do right here, Candice, if you watch my screen here, is I can click to add tags and I can add another tag to all of these notes at the exact time, exact same time. So I could merge them all, which would be a horrible mess. Don't hit that merge button, okay? Um, I could download and save all the attachments that are on those notes. Uh, I can create, this is crazy. Like people have, people have been using Evernote for 10 years don't know about this. I could create a table of contents note. I'm gonna do that at the end here but that will give me links inside of Evernote to all these notes. I will have one note with 488 links to other Evernote notes, which is awesome. I use table of contents all the time. I could start a presentation, which is gonna scroll through them, and then I could also move them to a notebook, but I'm going to just tag them. I'm gonna call this tag temporary, all right? And now that tag does not exist yet, otherwise it would have filled in, but I'm gonna hit enter, right? And now, all those have been tagged temporary. So again, for you listening right now, if you have content in Evernote and you're like, I wanna get it organized, search for a word, you know, get on, you know, select all of those notes, and then this menu will come up, right? And this image right here is just showing you, hey, this is a big pile of notes. And then you can tag them all at the same time, temporary. Okay, so we've done that. Now, if you see right here, this little circle, Candace, this is the synchronization status. That means that I've made a change, but it has not synced to the web yet, okay? So what I wanna do is I'm gonna hit the sync button, and then this will go away, and it'll say, okay, now these have all synced to the web, and you've made all your changes, and we've added that tag to everything there, okay? So um, it's gonna sync for a while, because it's making a change of 488 notes. Now, when I type in the word temporary, it will say, hey, you have 488 notes that are tagged temporary. Does that help at all, Candace? It does. Now, is that, only, is that only with the paid version or is that for the free version? Just write them all uh, you can do that on the free version. You're just gonna, you're just gonna, you're gonna click on all your notes uh, using that command a, command a or Control A, and then you should get this menu. You're, are you, do you use a Mac or a PC, Candace? I'm a Mac, girl. Mac, okay. So, um, yeah, your menu should look exactly like this. Now, I would not try to do this on Evernote Web. I would just do it on, uh, you know, the desktop version. But yeah, I would go ahead and um, I would go ahead and, and take that action and and start to tag things. Uh, you can even sort by things that are untagged and say which notes do I have that aren't tagged. Um, so let me clear this. And then remember too, you can customize this to this toolbar up here. That's why mine looks very very clean. I don't really have anything up here. Um, but uh, I'm gonna go and just view my tags real quick, and you can see all of my tags. See all those tags I have? No, because right. I see you now. Oh, sorry, sorry. See, I forget, I forget that I switch over. All right, here we go. Thank you for telling me. I should not really just look like an idiot for five minutes. I look like an idiot for one minute. All right, so if you look over here, you see this temporary now? 488 notes are temporary. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, now check this out. How many of the notes are, see, see how some of these are grayed out and some of these are brighter? So when you click on a, a tag, this is pretty cool, it will say, hey, you have, uh, you have eight notes that are template that are also tagged temporary. Actually, no, wait, hold on a second here. Let's see here. It says, I'm sorry, if you click on two tags, well, for, for step one, if you see a lighter tag, that means that they are, some of them are, they share that tag. 
So how many of my tags share temporary and template? If I click both of them, I can see there's one note that has template and temporary. So this might be like super geeky, but my point is if you go, boy, I wanna look for, I'm Randall and I wanna look for articles from the New York Times that have to do with poverty. So if you've tagged correctly, you could be tagging the source and then you know a topic and you could go back and look at all your research for the last however long and look at, I wanna look for all my notes that are tagged with this topic and this topic together, combined, right? That are both tagged to that. And then you can start to look at those, okay? So it gets really robust, again, depending on, you might have four tags, you might have no tags, you might have, I mean, I don't know how many tags I have here. I, I, let's see here, I've got 4,500 notes. I don't, I don't have my tag count on here, but I, I, I'm sure I've got hundreds. But you can have like 10,000 tags, <laughs> right? So, um, so tag away, that's my advice. All right, does that help, Candice? Yeah. All right, great, great, all right, let me keep moving on here. Uh, uh, Ryan, I rarely use tags for shame, for shame. Yes, you're missing a key functionality. And, and here's why, I think our brain, Ryan, I think your brain thinks in tags. I think when you think about me, I don't know what you think about me, but you probably think male, right? Father, husband, Tennessean, you know, guy with big microphone. I mean, I, I don't know, podcast, right? Uh, talks too much, I, I don't know, uh, needs a haircut. You know, uh, but if you take a piece of information and you put a bunch of tags on it, you have such a better chance, such a better chance of finding that information when you want to find it. So um, you are missing out if you're not using tags because it's how your brain works. Um, you know, like yesterday I said to my son, what's your buddy's name? Ezekiel, Ez it starts with an E, right? And I could, I could, his name, I think his friend's name, I still don't remember his friend's name. But the point is, I remembered part of that information. I mean, if I had Evernote and I had put his friend's names in there, then I could have, that's a fake cigarette, by the way. Um, in my background. Uh, but I can remember bits of information and we all can. So use tags in that regard. Uh, organizational tools and how to use uh, would work for me. I I'm just gonna say, um, and I'm not gonna get your name wrong, so I'm not gonna say it. Uh, but Miss Longspear, um, I would say as an organizational tool, Evernote will work if you're not very organized. Like I don't think I'm a very organized person, but I, at least I have all my stuff in one place. Evernote's like that stack of papers in your office and you're like, I know that bill is in that stack, but I don't know where the bill is in the stack. Except for in Evernote, you can actually go find the bill like that, right? So if you're super organized, like my friend Mike is, and you, you've got a great tagging system that works for him, great. But I can't do Mike's tagging system. It just doesn't work for me. It just, I, I, I can't think that way. But I'm not doing it wrong. As long as you can find your information, you're doing it right. How many notebooks do I have? I don't have very many notebooks. I might have three or four. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, I don't, have, I don't have very many. But if you do a lot of sharing with other people, you might want to put information in notebooks. But I only have, I basically put almost all my notes in just one notebook. Um, can you have subfolders? You can put, um, yeah, you can have notebooks inside of notebooks. Um, so yes, in a sense you can. Um, I've been using Evernote basically as a glorified notepad. That's great. What are some really great integrations with other apps I'm missing out on? It's a good question. I mean, I, I don't use a lot of apps that integrate with Evernote. I mostly just do things inside of Evernote because Evernote has increased its functionality. I have an Android phone now, so I can like, take notes on something like physically. Um, I, I would just say the integration is you wanna put as many different kinds of files and notes inside of there. Um, I think one people miss out a lot on is PDFs. Like how many times have you gotten a PDF and you just didn't do anything with it? Like I know that somebody here has downloaded a PDF from me and they never did anything with it. Put it in Evernote, right? And then you can actually go inside of Evernote and you can like write on it, right? And you can circle stuff and you can highlight stuff. Um, and if you have the paid version of Evernote, listen to this. If you put a PDF inside of Evernote on the paid version, 20 minutes later and you type a word that's inside of that PDF, it will find that word in that PDF. Because it's gonna do that OCR, which is optical character recognition. So when it comes to integration, you know, I don't use a lot of other apps because Evernote has kind of folded them into themselves. I'm sure there's other ones. 
But for the way I use Evernote, I usually just sit inside of Evernote to do most of my functionality. But one tool a lot of people don't know about is the optical character recognition. So if I took a picture of something, if I took a picture of my wall over there, in 10 minutes I could type a word that was on my whiteboard and Evernote would find that written word. It will acknowledge handwriting, even handwriting as bad as mine. Um, how to organize hundreds of notes uh, in all notes with no tags. I think I talked about that, Rob, if I wasn't clear. Uh, how would you use Everclip on the phone or is there a better method? Yeah, I mean, uh, Android as well as iOS is gonna have that sharing where if, you're, if, you're, uh, if you've got an email, you can forward it. If you're on a website, you can share it and you put it into Evernote. So Evernote's integration for sharing or getting information, like let's say you're in Flipboard, which is one of my favorite news reading apps, or Feedly is another app I use. You can hit share and then you can go um, put that information inside of your Evernote and then tag it, you know, article or research or New York Times or whatever you want to do. Um, but um, but the, the, the web clipper that maybe Randall was talking about, I don't know if you use that or not, Randall, but you're on the web. It's got a little extension. You can click on it. You can either save the article as is. You can save just the URL. You can clip the article and simplify it so it takes out all the images. You can add a tag. You can add multiple tags. You can add a note about the article. Those are all things you can do with that Evernote web clipper. Um, but uh, on my mobile, uh, you know, I don't, I don't throw a lot of things from my mobile into Evernote. I use that more on my desktop. All right, great question. Uh, Fruitful One says, I like the idea of a tag server on my iPad. I can't seem to figure out how to add new tags. You know, I'd have to look at that, but um, on the left side, well, here's the other thing. When you type a tag for the first time, it should save that tag. So fruitful one, if you go to make a new note and you add a tag at the very top, you're gonna click in the tags area and you type test or something like that and then you save the note, that tag should then exist. Uh, it, it, so you, you, know, you can create new tags that way. You can also go just to the tags area uh, in, in the sidebar and start typing them individually. Uh, but when you type a new tag, it will create that new tag. Even on individual, You don't have to go to the tags area to create a tag. You can be having a note and say, hey, I want to make a new tag and just type that new tag and it'll be right there, okay? As you can see, I mean, as you maybe saw, most of my tags have one or two notes. You know, some of them have 15, some of them have 40, but a lot of them just have one or two and that's okay. Like, it's okay if, if you know, you never use that tag again. And that might be the one word you need to remember. Um, see, Ian says, I'm using the free version. I find that I often run into problems when I'm out of network range. Uh, is this entirely solved by paying for the service? Yes, Ian, because when you are on the paid version, you can access your notes offline. You can download them to your phone, which you can't do um, in the free version. So that's an advantage of that. Um, do, 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 which Mark just answered that question. Thank you, Mark. Um, where can you find the recording feature in Evernote? I haven't been able to record the feature uh, on Evernote and my Dell computer since I went to beta version, I haven't been able to find how to record. So let me just show you, I mean, this is a Mac, so it's gonna look a little different. Uh, but let's just go over here and I'll go to make a new note here real quick. And for me, uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm gonna go up here to this little microphone. Okay, and that's where I'm gonna record. If I'm on an Android, then there's gonna be a record button for audio, but you wanna look for this right here. And I am now recording. Uh, I might have a little conflict. Oh, there we go. It's working there. So there's my recording that's going on. You can see the volume meter right there. And if I wanna add an attachment, if I wanna take a picture, I can click there. And my camera might be freaking out because it's got, there we go. So take a snapshot. Oh, what a lovely picture. All right, there we go. And let's close that because that's horrible. All right, so that's how you can find the, uh, the, um, uh, the mic there. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, let's see, recording feature, Eric, what percentage of your time is spent on desktop version versus phone tablet? I spend a lot of time on my desktop, I just do. I, I, something I think we could all do better is when you are doing something on your phone, ask yourself, is this the best place to do this? 
And I think most of the time you'll go, no, it's not. Like I'll, I'll start writing an email on my phone and I'm like, this is dumb. This is going to take me five minutes to write an email. If I sit on my computer, it's going to go a lot faster. So I will add little bits of information via my, my phone, but most of my interaction with Evernote is on my desktop. That's me. I'm not super mobile. I have a home office. So uh, that, but that's me. Uh, let's see here. I have an idea. Can you show where the recording features in the video? Yes, I did that. I love using Evernote to store business cards. Yep, you can store business cards in there. Um, and when you do that, you can have your own information stored. It'll automatic, automatically um, add those people to your address book. And then you can, with one button, send them your information. Um, so that's, that's, a paid, that's part of the paid version. How do you utilize shortcuts? Candice, great question. Um, let me just show you that real quick. So I generally, you can use shortcuts for a lot of different things. Um, so my shortcuts are over here on the side. Everybody should be able to see this right now. Here's shortcuts. And these are, if you see this little, little search icon right here, okay? Well, first, uh, this is cool. This is cool. Most people don't know this. If I hover over the third one, you can see, and it says show note podcast template. Come on, stay there. Hold on a second, it'll pop up again. It says Command 3. I think it's Control 3 for PC. But if I want to jump to that third shortcut, I just hit Command 3, and it opens up that shortcut. I want to go to Free Writing Software Comparison Guide, Command 4. Right Now check this out. Whatever number they are is the shortcut. So I'm going to move Free Writing up, and now I'm going to say, now the podcast template is Command 4. And I'm just saying, if, if, if you want to, you could jump to different shortcuts. It only works to like command zero. But here's some shortcuts. And shortcuts are just, you know, you got thousands of notes, throw them over into shortcuts. They're going to show up on your mobile as well if you're on the paid version. But this right here is a saved search I put over here. This right here, product, product blueprint, this is a tag. So you can put your tags over here in shortcuts. And then these are individual notes, and you can see the different icons I have there. So there's a tag called pricing, there's a tag called blog post, and the rest of these are notes. So how can you use shortcuts? However works for your brain. You can't do it wrong other than not using them, okay? But you can save searches, you can save individual notes, you can save tags, you can save notebooks, you can serve all kinds of stuff, and you just drag them over here. So pre-course survey right here, I would just take it and I would drag it over here, and boom, now that's a shortcut, all right? I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna remove it from the shortcuts. All right, so that's shortcuts. Keep moving here. Uh, let's see here. Shortcuts, Michael, that's the best teacher on anything. Grateful for both of you. Yes, he's a very smart person. Um, and thank you for your kind words. Uh, can you have Evernote remind you of things? Yes, you can, Candace, great question. Uh, up here, you can use this little timer. Let me go to share my screen. Uh, share screen. Uh, right here, there's a timer. So if I click on this, I could add a reminder. I could add a date. I could say tomorrow at, um, let's see, tomorrow is the first, right, at 8 a.m. So there we go. So it will remind me tomorrow at 8 a.m. At 8 a.m. And a notification will pop up here. You can sync this if you use the Outlook app. There used to be an app called Sunrise, but Microsoft bought them and they folded them into uh, the Outlook. Uh, it might still function, but it's going to die eventually. But you, if you wanted your Evernote reminders to sync with uh, one of your apps to kind of work with your calendar, then you'd have to use the Microsoft Outlook app, which I don't. So that's why I don't use these reminders. Uh, but they will also show up here on the left, I believe, your reminders. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yep, right here. See this column right here? So I just made this reminder, and so you can see you've got your reminders up here as well. Okay, and that's an option. If you have the app. Um, it's a good question. I, I don't know. I don't use them, um, but I would assume they would. I would assume that they would give you a notification on your phone. Um, I would lean more towards yes for Android than I would for iOS because it's more of a closed system. But great question. Uh, I could guess, but it's 50-50. So flip a coin and you're, you're as smart as me. Uh, all right, let's see here. 
business cards. Um, can I write into a PDF or change it? Absolutely, Caroline's iPad. Um, and uh, that's, I think, a phenomenal use of Evernote. And I would encourage you to do that using like an iPad um, uh, is really the best. I, I have found one of the best uses of Evernote that people don't use is, again, I said PDFs, but if you have an iPad and you have PDFs, iPads are great for reading PDFs and then writing on them, making notes. Um, so, uh, or, or any, you know, or Android tablet or whatever, but tablets are really good for that. Uh, so yes, writing on PDFs is great. How do you solve the problem of an Evernote search finding too many notes that I'm not looking for? You can add other things to it. So, um, you know, if I, um, if I use the word family, I could use family and I could use another word or I could search, um, uh, let's see here. I mean, basically just have to add more qualifiers, um, which again can be difficult. But um, for instance, let's say this, if you find something and it's got, you know, you've got 488 of them, you can, you can hit, uh, let me find all those notes, right? And I'll pull up 488 go back to the search box, it will search within those 488. So you can keep drilling down. But again, as quickly as you can, as most often as you can, go back and add notes to that. Okay, that's really gonna save you a lot of time. Uh, let's see here, do I ever purge? No, I don't, it's too much work. <laughs> I, I don't really delete anything out of there. It just sort of falls away. Like it's not like my garage, like in my neighborhood, most people had to park on their driveway. Why? Because their garage is full of crap. Right, like, but it's not, this is digital. So just keep it in there. You never know, right? Uh, if you want to purge, good luck, God bless, go for it. But I don't, I don't worry about it. Um, I just keep it in there because you never know. Um, didn't see the recording button on your screen. Okay, uh, let me share my screen again. Evernote, share screen. So on each note, let me do a new note here. Um, and you type in the, in the uh, compose area. Up here, you've got your alignment, you've got a table, you've got this little record icon, it's just a little uh, microphone. That's where that is, all right? And you'll see some sort of record or mic icon um, on, on all platforms, okay? You can record audio no, no matter what your platform is. Uh, let's see here. Uh, recording it either one thing you discovered about Evernote that surprised you the most so don't be mad at me well you can be mad at me if you want it's free country uh, it's free world mostly most of the places I would say uh, how confusing Evernote is like it people are people a lot of times people just want to be told what to do and Evernote is like an empty drawer and people are like, great, thanks for the empty drawer. What do I do with it? And they're like, oh, this is amazing. They're like, you could tag things, you can label things, you can organize things, you can search things. And you're like, great, but what do I put in the drawer? Like, you put anything you want there. Okay, and what do I, ha what do, I do with it when I get there? Oh, you find it. <laughs> okay, but what, what should I, so that's why hopefully I've been helpful today uh, in, in, in helping you understand what you can put in, how you can keep it organized. But the thing that surprised me the most is that, um, and, and this is frankly where I've been able to sell Evernote courses and, and consult uh, people on how to use Evernote and get paid to do that, is a lot of people just go, all right, Andy, and this is what I do. I'll, I'll, I'll say to, like, let's just say, I'll say to Randall. I say, Randall and I, are, I'm doing a coaching with Randall. I say, Randall, tell me everything you can about your business, about your workflow, about your blog, about your podcast. Just tell me what you do and what you want to achieve, and Randall will do that. And then I would say, okay, here's how you can use Evernote to, do, to help you with that. And whether he, you know, uh, is a, a taxidermist or he's a tax accountant or, you know, or he's a taxi driver, whatever it might be, um, I believe Evernote is a great tool for most people, especially people that deal with information, you know, not physical products, but really their, their currency is words and ideas. Uh, so I love that question. Uh, one thing I discovered about Evernote surprised me the most is how most people are, they're, they're paralyzed by the possibilities. And I think that's totally legitimate. It's totally legitimate. And that's why I like to tell people about how to use Evernote, because most of the time people walk away and they go, okay, now I get it. But I didn't tell them what to do, I just told them what they could do, right? 
Um, what does my email inbox look like then? Well, I get a lot of emails out and into Evernote. Um, uh, so, you know, I, I don't have a problem with email. I, um, so uh, I, I will forward things if I need to archive them for later, but if I need to respond, I just respond and they're done. Um, but you know, I, I forward things in Evernote that I just go, okay, I don't wanna have to go searching for Gmail, but a lot of times I'll search in Gmail too. Um, you know, I think Gmail's a, a, you know, a second, you know, it's a second place to memory when it comes to uh, our archiving things. I archive a lot more emails than I delete emails in Gmail. So it kind of gives you an idea of how I do things. Um, but I'm not going to show you my email inbox because there's private stuff in there. Um, can you send a Gmail email to Evernote? Absolutely. Now I would show you this, but just go to your system. If you're a paid user, go to your uh, account details and you can go to evernote.com to do that. Uh, or you can go up to uh, Evernote and then account info. Okay. In inside of um, your, your desktop. And you're going to have a custom email address to your account. So let me just tell you, if I gave you all, if I gave every person here, if I gave you that email address, all of you could start sending stuff into my email account, or into my Evernote account. <laughs> That's why you don't give it to other people. <laughs> like I trust you, you're lovely people, but I'm not going to show you that address. What you do is you save, you go find that address and you save it as a contact in your email address, uh, in your email service. And then you just forward emails to that address. To tag individual items, you do pound symbol or hashtag, uh, and then the name of the tag you want. So if Randall sends me something and I wanna tag it temporary, then I would open that email, I would forward it to my, my unique Evernote email address, which is long and funky, it's got a bunch of letters and numerals, right? Uh, and then I, in the subject line, I, the subject line of the email will become the title of the note. And if I put, you know, uh, information from Randall and then I put space, hashtag, temporary, hashtag, whatever, that will, that will add the note to my Evernote in 20 seconds and it will also tag it, okay? You can also send it from your email to notebooks, but I only have one notebook. So um, it, will, it will go to your default notebook, but that's how you can go from your email to your Evernote. Uh, and if you are a paid user, then you have that functionality, okay? Uh, that's one way. All right. Um, so much easier than to file stuff into Evernote versus with an email. It might require more explanation. How much easier is it to file stuff into Evernote versus with, you know, again, I'm just going to, I'm just going to play. I'm going to be Switzerland here and be neutral. It's what works for you. If you find yourself losing things a lot, then tag them and put them in Evernote. Right. But I don't, I don't, here's the thing. Like people think I'm organized. I'm not. I'm not, I just use Evernote. Like I'm not smart, Evernote's smart, but I only have to remember one word, one word, and then I'll find it in Evernote. So, um, you know, how, how, how do I understand Evernote so much? Because I put so much stuff in it. Because I, I, you know, when there's only one place to find something, you'll find it. Like what's the difference between losing your keys in your car and losing your keys? Well, you're probably gonna find your keys if they're somewhere in your car. Right, like here's a funny quick story about, this is maybe a, a good analogy for Evernote. I have one set of keys for my car. Like I bought a car like I don't know, eight months ago. I have one set of keys. I'm too cheap to spend $400 to get a new key fob. Because when I was a little kid, it was like three bucks for a car key and that's 300 bucks. But here's what's funny. I'll lose the little key fob and I'll go, okay, I don't know if it's in my house and I don't know if it's in my car. But you know how I find out if it's in my car? I go sit in my car, I hit my foot on the brake pedal and I hit the start button. And if the car starts, the key is somewhere in my car. If the car doesn't start, then the key is somewhere in my house. And the reason I tell you that story is, you know, how do you find things? Well, you have a system, right? You, you just put them in one place. That's why my wife's like, hey, if you could just put the keys in the same place every time. Like, I lose my keys a lot more than I lose anything else because I just don't put them in that one place. I'm telling you, friends, the more information you put in Evernote, the smarter you're going to feel, the more organized you're going to be even if you're not that much smarter or more organized because Evernote will do it for you because Evernote is like you and me, but it doesn't forget, right? Um, Maybe let me expand on that a little bit more. Yeah, I go ahead. My, my lead designer spends probably no less than two hours a day 
sorting her emails. She gets probably, probably like you, probably a hundred emails a day that all relate to different forms of our clients. Mm -hmm. And she literally has subfolder after subfolder after subfolder in her outlook that she files these all in. And then when a key bit of information comes up that she needs to dig out and find it, she goes through all of these things. So my question is, is basically by using Evernote versus using Outlook, will that process be that much more faster for her to go through versus spending like two, two and a half hours a day on it? She's maybe only spending 30 minutes a day on it because the forwarding feature of Evernote is that much more efficient than finding the file, dragging it, finding the file, dragging it. Yeah. So I know that Outlook has, is a great question. It's, an hard, it's honestly, it's a hard question. Um, you broke up. I didn't hear the question. I'm just kidding. I heard the question. It's just a really hard one. Um, I, I would just say she has to find a system that works and that seems like a lot of time. And I would just say if I could watch her workflow a little bit or understand like to me, it seems like it would make more sense if there's really important information there to copy it and then paste it into a massive note or forward into Evernote because I trust Evernote's search feature more than Outlook's. I don't use Outlook, but I just think it's going to, it's to me, it would seem easier to search through Evernote than it would through an email inbox. And I, and I do both. I mean, um, but you know, I, you know, you're, what you're getting into is, are you going to manage it as a project? And there's a lot of information there then then use something like Basecamp, right? That's really going to be a place that's separate from your email, separate. So client communication about that is actually inside of a separate program. Um, but it just sounds to me like, you know, she's that librarian and everybody brings her this big stack of books and they say, okay, now file this. And, you know, that's just, that's just a lot of work. And so I, I might say Evernote might not be the right tool for her at all. Uh, something like Basecamp or more project management where you've got a bunch of questions about this one piece of, uh, you know, this, this one uh, image you've created and you're doing revisions on it. I, I would rather have a place where, that image is stored and we're having a conversation about that image versus emails going back and forth about different elements. So I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a difficult question to answer because I don't know exactly what she's getting, but um, if she's frustrated by it, there's probably a better solution. We're cabinet designers. So we get, like you're saying, the elements. So we send out a set of drawings right. and depending on our client, we get somewhere between a paragraph of snippet or four pages right. of verbiage back and forth of changes that they want. Yeah. So, I mean, just to be really blunt, like I would just say create tags for each client and, um, you know, I would add a tag. Um, yeah, I would just have a tag for each client. And then you, when you go click on that individual tag, uh, you know, how many, how many clients do you have at any given time? 10 or a thousand? Mm, somewhere between 15 and 20 in okay. various stages of, so of on your on your short I would have shortcuts be tags to those clients so all your whole shortcuts menu could be I mean you could have some templates and workflows there but I would have if you're going to use Evernote to keep track of client communication I would forward all your emails into Evernote and then tag them accordingly and then in, once you're inside Evernote you can just because once you're inside Evernote you could search you can you can click on a tag and organize it by uh, the date that it's been sent, right? So it's not just this huge pile. But the other thing you get is if everyone is sharing an Evernote account, right? Then, or businesses and you're saving, sharing the notebook then everybody's going to have access to that. So if she's got an email or he's got an email and he's got it in his outlook and you go, Hey, I need those changes. Instead of going, well, okay, I'll forward the email for mine. If it's all in that central place of Evernote, then, then, um, then you just go, yeah, that's under the Thompson tag. And it's, you know, I know that was from last week, you know, but you're going to have that on their phone, your phone or your tablet or your computer, just like he or she is, if that makes sense. So oh, it makes total sense. And that's part of our problem is, is the communication of she has it, but I don't and vice versa. Exactly. Yeah. You need to have a central place. And I think Evernote could be that for you. So uh, let's see. I'm going to do a giveaway in like two minutes here. Uh, Never understood how to use Evernote for workflow. I mean, I, I'm, I'm with you, Red. It's confusing because you kind of just have to make your own. Let me show you one thing and then I'll do the giveaway. Um, okay, I'm going to share my screen and we'll do a giveaway. I'm just grateful you guys are here. I hope this is helpful. There's no pitch coming. I'm just going to show you some stuff. All right, so 
this is um, my TPMN podcast master note. Everybody see this here? All right. So this is a master note. And so I have um, some major important notes, and I'll show you how to get to these links. Then I have sort of the, 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 the uh, statement of faith, if you will, about my show. Right, I believe that opting out of the system you were, you were, I believe that opting out of the system you were and continue to be told was required for success, blah, 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 blah. So that's sort of my mantra, right? These are the four topics I talk about. These are unsorted topics. And then these are sorted topics. Now you'll notice some of these are green. What these are are note links, right? And so these links go to, so what you think about gas prices says a lot about yourself, okay? So if I click on this, this is under the relationships category, this will go to another note inside of Evernote. So there it is right there. Now check this out. Um, so that's a note link. So I'm linking inside of Evernote. So check this out. This is the master note. If I hit control, option, command, C, right? I just copied a, this note link. So watch what I'm gonna do here. Go back down to that note, I'm gonna click on it. All right, I'm gonna go back up here. That's just a voice note that I made. I don't know when I made it, a long time ago. I made this note uh, in February, Valentine's Day this year, okay? Uh, now I'm gonna paste. What I just did is I pasted a link to the master note right there because I copied it. And so now I can go back and forth in between this note and the master note. And what these are is they're note links. Now, uh, that's when I, when I was looking for the, uh, the temporary, I'll do that again, the temporary tag. One of the options, right, so I've got all these, I've got all these notes. So just imagine you've got 10 notes and you're like, you know what, it'd be great if I could get to all 10 of those notes with one note, okay? My computer's going super slow because I'm maxing it out right now. So if you wanted to get to all those notes at once, one of the options is gonna be to create a table of contents note. I'm gonna click that button and it's going to create a table of contents note with 488 links to other notes, just like that. So what you could do, um, Candice, is that you could, for each client, create a table of contents note to all the other notes that relate to that client. Now the problem is it doesn't update itself automatically. So as you add new notes, you'd have to kind of do that manually. But the idea is that, as you can see here, it just went from, okay, now I have this big long list, to now actually you have one note, you can navigate to all of them. Now how uh, helpful is that to you? Again, I don't know, you have to build it in a way that makes sense for you. But um, this right here, see copy note link. Every note has a possible link and these are links within Evernote, okay? So I just showed you how to make a note link and you can copy those and paste them into different notes so you can navigate in between notes. And then also I showed you how if you select more than two notes, right, more than one note I should say. So I just chose two notes right here, one, two. I can create a table of contents note right there as well. Okay, so that's a great way if you have 10 things that relate to each other, say you're working on a book, you're working on a chapter and you go, I would love to have all those notes in one note for me to kind of click back and forth. Um, and you're starting to build a framework where you can navigate in. So hopefully that's helpful. All right, so I have no idea how to give away what I wanna give away and be fair, other than just be like, this is what dads do and they wanna make their kids mad, is I'm just gonna pick a number. So a number between one and a thousand, and hold on, I'm gonna go right down the number, hold on. So be ready to type in the chat what your number is, one to a thousand, okay, hold on. Well, just type it in now. Go ahead and type it in. All right. This might be the most exciting part of my day. All right. So let's put in your numbers. And let's first, what, did everybody, you have two seconds to put in your number. And I'm going to give away three months of Evernote. Uh, now just you know, send me your email or send me an email and I'll, and I'll give you a code for three months of free Evernote. Okay. All right. So you have three seconds. All right. The number is, let me scroll to the bottom. All right. Hold on. You know, Neil, you just got in, just got in the last second. All right. No more. Sorry. No more. The number is 
724. So, Ryan, you look like the closest. Let me see. Oh, uh, Brian is. Brian is close, but he went over. I'm sorry, Brian. I should have said closest without going over, but it's Price is Right rules. So, Ryan, Ryan, you are the winner. Ryan, send me an email, andy at takepermission.com, and I'll give you a code. Here's another cool little quick tip. This notebook right here, you see this? This was $13. I wrote a blog post about this. This was $13, which you think, Andy, why did you pay $13 for a tiny little notebook? Because it has three free months of Evernote in it, which is worth about $11. So this notebook cost me basically two bucks. It's a sweet little Moleskine notebook. And inside of it, it has little stickers, and you can assign those stickers to different things. See these little stickers right here? You can assign those stickers to different tags. So when you take a picture of it, it'll automatically tag that note. I know it's super geeky. So I'll send you the code that's inside this notebook, Ryan. Um, price is right rules. Okay. All right. Thanks for understanding, Brian. Uh, Ryan, you cannot say anymore you've never won anything because now you have. You're like, I won some lame Evernote premium. All right. Um, uh, I'm going to answer this question from Fruitful One and then we'll wrap up. Do you see this? I'm recently upgraded to the next level to get more gigs. So I went to Plus. What are the advantages of going to Premium? Do you use Evernote for to-dos? And if so, how? I don't use Evernote for to-dos. Um, you certainly can, but I don't use them for to-dos. Uh, I use Nozbe for that, which is a different program. Uh, it actually integrates with Evernote pretty well. Nozbe, N-O-Z-B-E. It's like my task management system. Um, I think premium is amazing. Uh, it, the offline capabilities are great. Email, I mean, just all those things. Um, if you go to evernote.com slash pricing, I just think it's worth it. Like I just, it's, 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 it, I can't imagine living without Evernote because I put so much into it. So um, I, I like most of the features of premium. I don't do the business card thing because I don't like business cards, but um, in general, I just, I just, um, um, yeah, I, I, I use a lot of the features of premium Evernote because I try to like max out the tool. So, um, okay. So Ryan Stroud, you won. Uh, did I get the right Ryan? I'm, I feel bad now. Oh yeah, I get it. Okay. Ryan Stroud, you won. All right. Ryan Hamilton, you did not win, but I'm sorry. You're still a great person. Okay. Um, wow. This has been awesome. Like there's a ton of you that have hung out and I hope that I've been helpful. Uh, I'm going to post this replay. Um, privately and I'll put a password on it and then you guys can go and um, you guys can go and, and watch replay if you need to.